Thank you for watching Deeper Than Red. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell when new episodes are released. Every last Wednesday of each month, a new episode will come out. Once again, dive in and enjoy this episode. In the howling wind, Matthew Henson trudged through the icy wind. There was nothing but ice and snow for hundreds of miles. Finally, Matthew reached his destination. He carefully measured his location and measured again to be sure. He could barely believe it. He had reached the North Pole. Matthew Henson was the first man to stand on top of the world Matthew had to learn how to survive at a very young age. His mother and father died when he was a boy. When Matthew was 12, he signed up to be a cabin boy on a large sailing ship. For the next six years, the captain taught Matthew important survival skills and how to be a successful sailor. When the captain died, Matthew left the ship and took a job as a shop clerk for a furrier in Washington, D.C. One day, a naval officer named Robert Perry came into the store. Robert had a collection of seal and walrus pellets to sell. He was immediately impressed with Matthew's experience and adventurous spirit. Robert hired Matthew as his personal assistant and invited him to take part in his next assignment. Robert served in the Navy Corps of Civil Engineers. He was given the job of mapping and exploring the Nicaraguan jungles. Robert and Matthew spent two years exploring the rainforest of Central America. It wasn't an easy job. The two men braved jaguars, snakes, crocodiles, and many other dangers. After they returned from Nicaragua, Robert invited Matthew to join him on an expedition to the Arctic. The North Pole was still undiscovered territory. Reaching the North Pole would be a significant achievement in science and in exploration. Matthew and Robert were determined to be the first to reach the North Pole. In 1891, the two men began an 18-year partnership of Arctic exploration. Although Robert was the public face of the partnership, Matthew was the front man in the field. He was a highly skilled carpenter, an excellent hunter and fisherman. He was fluent in the Eowit language and was known by the Eowit people as Matthew, the kind one. Historians suggest that much of the success in these expeditions was due to Matthew's expertise. But the Arctic landscape was extremely challenging. One day, the men were walking across a frozen lake and suddenly, Matthew fell through the ice. His Eowit friend, Uta, saved his life by pulling him from the frozen water. After seven attempts to reach the North Pole, Matthew and Robert decided that they would try one last time. In March of 1909, their North Pole expedition officially began. The weather had fallen 65 degrees below zero. Matthew, Robert, and their Ewit team members marched for five days towards the pole. On April 6, Matthew rose from his igloo early in the morning. Matthew was ahead of the rest of the party and he was the first to reach their destination. Matthew was quoted in the newspaper. I was in the lead that overshot the mark by a couple miles. We went back and then I could see my footprints were the first at the spot. When they returned to the United States, Robert was the celebrated discoverer of the North Pole while Henson was introduced as his companion. Because Matthew was black, he received very little acknowledgement for his achievements for almost 20 years. However, in 1946, the U.S. Navy awarded Matthew the Medal of Merit for his achievement. 
1954, he was invited to the White House by President Dwight Eisenhower to receive a special commendation for his work as an explorer. Matthew died in 1955. He was laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery and was given full military honors. Thanks for watching Deeper Than Red. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media.